Hello and welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. And with me today, Tom Equals, the CEO of Hemispherics Biopharma. So good to see you again. Good to see you, Jane. Now we talked last year, you had just become CEO of the company. And I know you were making some big changes, trying to get the company, get it back on track. So take me back there. What were some of those changes you want implemented? And then we'll move forward to today. Well, we uh, initiated a uh, policy of stronger financial responsibility, cutting our burn rate by more than half. Um, in conjunction with that, we prioritized uh, getting uh, Amplogen approval for MECFS, that's known here in the United States as chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, in whatever venues possible. Uh, we were extremely uh, excited and appreciated when the Republic of Argentina approved Amplogen as the first ever therapy uh, recognized in the world for this dread disease. If you understand the nature of MECFS in the United States, for example, you have the CDC's estimated a million people have the serious form of the disease. We were approved for severe MECFS in Argentina. We estimate that there's probably as many as 200,000 people in the United States afflicted with the severe form of the disease which is completely disabling. These people go from productive jobs to being unable to work, in many instances, unable to care for themselves even in their own home. Where yeah. is it in the process of U.S. approval? We are the only late-stage drug in the pipeline for approval in the United States. So it's currently before the uh, FDA um, in a new drug application. Uh, we're, we're working on uh, negotiation for confirmatory uh, activity subsequent to our uh, phase three clinical trial. Uh, we have a complete response letter from the FDA requiring additional confirmatory work and we're trying to negotiate a, uh, a, a protocol for that and, and a mechanism for approval. Okay. Now um, we have a new president who has talked about streamlining the process of approval of drugs. Would that impact your company, in particular this treatment? Well, I, I, I think uh, as I understood what President Trump said in his uh, pronouncement on uh, the biotech industry, uh, pharma industry, and, and uh, the FDA, uh, he indicated in those instances where there are unmet medical needs for serious illnesses that he wanted to clear the decks and come up with an expedited approval process so the drugs were safe and they could help some part of that patient population, they would be given expedited approval. You know, that same thing applies in, in a certain sense with chronic fatigue syndrome. For these people who are, are bedridden, you know, they, they're, they're left in a, what's called, they call it, the patients call it a brain fog, but it's a, a almost complete cognitive dysfunction. Um, uh, they're light sensitive. They can't get out of bed to care for themselves to the point of even showering or, you know, going to the kitchen to feed themselves. They require a caregiver. So they're, they're essentially disabled and it's like being paralyzed in a bed with the lights out, mm -hmm. unable to process thoughts even. Right. So can you imagine a worse scenario? So we want to give them you know, hope mm -hmm. that there's a therapy. And I think that's what the president is saying is, is that in these cases where it's an unmet medical need and, and uh, people are in desperate need of a therapy, you know, he's going to figure out a way to clear the path. Mm -hmm. And we've talked before about um, CFS and how these people have been active and involved and had thriving careers and then they have this disease and it just completely changes their life. Yes. Many, in many instances, uh, uh, the victims of this disease have been, you know, very high energy, hard working, successful, uh, artisans, professionals, business people, um, uh, tradesmen, and, and their life has been put into a shambles as a result of the disease. They go from being highly productive to totally disabled. Now, the chronic uh, fatigue syndrome uh, social costs are enormous in the United States of America. Sure. I believe the CDC estimated the social cost of chronic fatigue syndrome in the United States of America at $22 billion. Hmm. And when Just they're from out of, lost productivity and exactly, not going to work. They're looking and, uh -huh. at all the costs. Right, you know, right. you've got the disability payments, you've got medical care, you've got lost productivity. Okay. CDC estimates in the United States I mean, a million people okay. 
have a serious form of the disease. Okay. Um, we're focusing on the severe form of the disease, okay. the totally disabling mm -hmm. form of the disease. We would estimate that that's 100,000 to 200,000 people. Okay. You know, there's, there's no sure. you know, clear number there. And the economic costs are, are huge, too, associated with that. The yes, it's, well, it's a huge market mm -hmm. for the drug once approved, but it's also, you know, uh, a, a huge social cost that becomes alleviated. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to have compassion for these people. You know, can you imagine what it would be like? Oh my gosh. You know, you, yes. you, you feel like you have uh -huh. the flu, but two weeks later you're in bed and you can't, you know, you can't yeah. seem to get over it. And three months later, you know, God forbid, you know, you're, you're unable to go to work. You can't even take care of your children. You know, what, what, what is it uh, about that, you know, that, that we don't understand that it requires mm -hmm. a priority be made mm -hmm. to help these people? Mm -hmm. You know, it brings tears to my eyes when, when I see these people relegated to that condition. The reason we're the only drug in late stage in the pipeline is because we began this process during that period of time mm. when there was not a consensus as to the disease. Uh -huh. And you will be a part of the NASDAQ event um, that Small Cap Nation is doing. Um, so tell me about that. Um, you're going to have a chance to tell your story at that event on February 21st. Well, I think it's very important that the uh, uh, family offices and the, the uh, investor groups that attend that event understand the potential at Hemispheric. You know, we are sitting here, you know, on the verge of opening up a market for a disease that has vast implications. You know, got hundreds of thousands of people, you know, worldwide with the most severe form of the disease. But let's just start there. You know, you've got a course of treatment. Uh, that costs tens of thousands of dollars. It's a nine-month course of treatment involving infusions twice a week. You know, if you do the math, this is a very big market. You know, and, and, and uh, we're at a place right now where, you know, our company's value is not getting credit for that market potential. And why should we get some credit for it? Is because if you look to the future, and th this is something I believe, you look to the future, the key thing for us is You've got a disease that's now been determined to be a biological disorder. You've got a need for a therapy. It's a totally unmet medical need in the world. And we are the only late stage drug in the pipeline that has any promise of being a therapeutic for that disease in the short term. So we have the potential to move into that market in a way where just because of circumstance, we have no competition. Yeah. And additionally, in the United States, we have orphan drug status granted to us by the FDA, mm -hmm. you know, when they saw our initial safety and efficacy data, they gave us an orphan drug designation. That orphan drug designation means that if we get approval in the United States, we have a certain period of exclusivity. I believe it's oh. seven years. Okay. So, so all of these things mm -hmm. are very, very meaningful in terms of the, the value of our intangible estate. Sure. And I think that, that that's being overlooked, you know, and if somebody thinks about it and calculates it, they'll see that this is, this is you know, uh, an opportunity that could be very meaningful. But we've also made great strides in oncology. You know, we're working very hard to follow up on our melanoma and re renal cell carcinoma studies uh, where we got orphan drug designation from the FDA as well, you know, showing that amplogen can be both, uh, has potential to be both a standalone therapy in certain lethal malignancies, as well as uh, our work at the University of Pittsburgh is indicating it may have merit as a combination therapy in, in anti-cancer cocktails. Okay. Lots of interesting things going on. So thank you for coming today, Tom, to tell well, the story. Was, and I look my, forward to great hearing more it's about it, uh, especially at that event. So, yeah. And thank you as well for joining us and for more interesting companies doing some interesting things and life-changing things. You can go to smallcapnation.com. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. Have a great day.